Hello everyone, my name is Lucia Cabrera, I am from Uruguay, and I will show the, um, the presentation ball of buffer zone of for nutrient load mitigation, potential nutrient supply by no recent plant eater. Uh, as we all know, the agricultural activities have been identified as one of the major agents of change in the soil, in the quality of the water bodies, and in the general functioning of uh, aquatic ex ecosystems. The main problem that cause changes in the water bodies are the mentioned in the presentation, and it is well known that the intensification of agricultural activities can cause diffuse transfer of nutrients, phosphorus, and nitrogen to the receiving water bodies through the runoff. This process, the runoff, which promotes the export of nutrients to water bodies, can cause enrichment in the waters and its eutrophication with all the impacts right in below. Several of these impacts of water bodies can be buffered by protecting or recovering the riparian zones, also called buffer zones. These buffer zones are bands of native vegetation located between the crops and the water body. They play a role as a physical barriers to pollutants and turns to be benefited with the nutrients that are transported with the runoff for their own growth. In the recent years, a decrease in the water quality has been noted in the main rivers of Uruguay. In 2015, the government promoted an action plan with the aim of reducing the low nutrients from the agricultural lands to the water bodies. This plan consists on the delimitation of a part of land near the body of water to promote the growth of riparian vegetation. However, these actions to recover the riparian zone were excluded despite the lack of local scientific knowledge. The delimitation of the riparian zone was implemented in 2015. Also, and consistent on the exclusion of agriculture and livestock, 100 meters from the margin of the water bodies. Discussions have been different effects on the richness, density, and diversity of the plant community. But it is also known that the absence of herbivory in the riparian zone could generate an accumulation of herb and grasses litter that could potentially contribute with nutrients aquatic system by runoff. Well then, the buffer zones without livestock and another kind of management can promote the accumulation of plant litter and soil in the soil, which can negatively affect its role as barrier of nutrients. And this is because while the litter decomposes, it can release nutrients to the environment. So, there are some factors influencing the plant litter decomposition, and the most important is the water availability in the area. Well, the objective of this study is to analyze the accumulation of above ground plant litter of herbaceous and graminoids present in different types of buffer zones, and to estimate its potential contribution of nutrients by the decomposition under different scenarios of rainfall, humidity, and runoff. The study area was Paso Severino Reservoir in Uruguay, Florida Department, and the basic main productivity, productive activity is the raising cattle and the crops. Um, in this slide, I will show the methodology. We process different years Landsat 8 images to know how the vegetation changed over the time using Air Studio and ArcGIS. We delimited at 1,100 meters buffer zones required by the, by the el, environmental laws in Uruguay, which is remarked in yellow. We found in this zone five land, land cover types, agriculture, natural grandlands, ground lands, uh, shrublands, native forests, and a little part of with other uses. We also calculate the area occupied by each type of land cover. Um, we use the amount of grasses and other herbs to calculate the plant biomass and litter accumulation in the buffer zone. So, we choose one side of each land cover in the buffer zone. In each zone, we analyze the accumulation of above ground uh, plant biomass and litter of herbs and grasses. So, we took two samples, one in the cold season and the other in the warm season. The herbaceous and grasses were cute at ground level in five quadrants of one square meter, meter randomly located at each, at, at each site. Then, and lab, and lab, we separate the living biomass and the litter. After that, we dry up them at 700 degrees 
for 48 hours to get their dry weight. Well, what happens if the litter decomposes? Well, we create nine hypothetical scenarios with the purpose to estimate the possible loss of nutrients due to the plant litter decomposition from the buffer zone without management. It sh should be noted that when carrying out these scenarios, all the biological, physical, and chemical processes that taking place during the decomposition were ignored. And this is why these scenarios are hypothetical and do not represent reality. In these nine scenarios, we combine different environmental conditions that affect one, the decomposition of grasses, that is the factor one, and then the subsequent flux of nutrients released by them throughout the water body. And this is the factor two. On factor one, we have the arbitrary, uh, arbit arbitrary decomposition values were generated regarding the most influential variable climate, like precipitation and humidity. A study that includes similar variables, a 50% of grasses and herbs decomposition was found in one year. So I took this value as an intermediate and also assigned arbitrary scenarios with decomposition of 20% more and less that could occur under condition of higher humidity and precipitation. Well, about the factor two, three hypothetical values are proposed for the income of nutrients uh, to the water body, released by the, decompo the litter decomposition through the runoff generated by different rifle intensities. 100% matches to the scenario of a high level of the reservoir, a flood, generated by high rainfall where the repairing zone can be under the water at all. In this case, 100% of the plant litter nutrients get the water body. On the other hand, less nutrients uh, income is scenario, 20% of the nutrient decomposition represent a minimal rainfall condition uh, necessary to generate the runoff. <clears throat> in the context in which buffer zone retain nutrients from runoff water, we evaluate the decomposition litter nutrients potential contribution through the water body regarding the entire buffer zone nutrients outputs, from which we use the annual total nutrient load average in the surface runoff published in the article of Calvo et al. In order to do so, we use the intermediate hypothetical scenario. We also estimate the amount of nutrients that are potentially exported to the water body. And to do that, we use the total area occupied by each zone buffer zone. This data was, was extracted from the satellital processing. Well, one of the main results is the land cover change in the 10, 100 meters perimeter around the Paso Severino Reservoir during the 2013 and 2019 period. It's, it's noted that agriculture continues to represent great importance uh, within this perimeter. As expected, the exclusion of livestock and agriculture in the buffer zone promote a progressive growth of good species, which manifests itself in the expansion of the forest cover. But despite of the decreased graphic result uh, for shoelands, uh, through one year of field work, we experienced a big shoreland growth, which transformed easy access areas into difficult ones. So we may be observing an error in the processing of the satellite images. This can result in a spectral similarity of the forest cover with the dense shrubs. <clears throat> well, with the plant biomass and litter accumulation, as it shows in the box plot, there are more litter than living biomass. And this is due to the fact that the majority of the grasses do not have abscission mechanisms in their leaves. Uh, this is why they remain in the plant for long periods until they become part of the litter. Uh, their shrublands and grasses uh, and have a significant Statistical, statistical effects with the factor season, from which we found more litter in the cold season, because it is the period of the year in which more annual plants die. Well, in the other hand, 
the, in the native forest, we found a very low amount of herbs and grasses, uh, living biomass and litter. And this is due to the fact that the tree canopy blocks direct light essential for herb growth. Uh, well, summing up, we found the same results uh, of Altesor in 202, the absence of herbivory promote the accumulation of herbs and grasses. Well, uh, as I said earlier, the amount of nutrients provided by the plant litter is highly dependent of the environmental condition. Uh, we now um, are um, showing uh, the nine hypothetical scenarios. On the right, we can see the amount of phosphorus potentially contributed by plant litter to the water body. And on the left, we can see the amount of nitrogen. As we see, their trends are equal. equal. Uh, these results contribute with the information to develop management plans in advance, which effects could be expected a nutrient output reduction to the water body. The shrublands was the buffer zone with the highest contribution of nutrients due to the large amount of plant litter. It should also be noted that in this work, the environmental scenarios of rough or low level of rain were not taken into account, where living biomass and litter accumulate but do not reach the water body because runoff is not generated. Well, in the next slide, uh, it's about the scenarios highlighted in these ones. Um, well, uh, in these hypothetical scenarios, I compare the past highlighted values taken from the intermediate scenarios with the runoff values taken in the article of Calvo et al. We can see that the grassland and shrublands have a relevant contribution of nutrients by the decomposition of plant litter. And it turned out that it's bigger in the cold season, and as I say, this may be the environmental factor that promote decomposition. It should be noted that this scenario is hypothetical and not real. It is a simplification and was not talking, taking into account the other destination of the litter decomposition. Well, again, stand, starting from the intermediate scenario, the highlighted ones, I propose trend scenarios. I made a future projection about what will happen to the nutrients output in, full, in four years, considering the land cover changing trends, observing in the satellite images processing. Well, first in the x axis, you will see two scenarios for 2023. The first one has no management, but the other has 50% removal of little management, little management, which are explained in several studies either using livestock or machinery to remove plant litter. As we can see, this intervention could decrease the contribution from the litter decomposition. In any case, uh, it could be necessary to effectively evaluate this management before their installation. And we can see that another way to reduce the nutrient load could be by promoting the expansion of native forests. In the paper of Calvo et al., they say that the forest could be the buffer zone with the greatest capacity to infiltrate runoff water in this area particularly. And also in this study, it's concluded that it could be an effective buffer zone due to the low amount of plant litter. Ah, well, in conclusion, the riparian areas have large amount of plant litter that could act as a source of nutrients. These riparian areas may have a greater buffer potential if management actions are carried out in order to reduce the plant litter accumulation. And well, the expansion of native forests is proposed as a way to reduce the nutrient load. Uh, well, perspective and contribution to management, most important aspect to investigate. Uh, well, before the application of the different management strategies, I propose the evaluation of the management techniques. And well, the aspect to investigate uh, the potential contribution of Newton by the plant litter decomposition, taking into account the possible destination and their magnitude. And also, uh, the contribution by phases and trampling by cattle. Is managing, mas management with livestock positive as a way to mitigate the contribution of nutrients? Okay, thank you. <laughs>